Myra Estrine Levine, Conservation Theory. Myra Levine was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1920. She was the oldest child with a younger brother and sister. Myra passed away on March 20th, 1996, when she was placed on hospice. Unfortunately, there's no obituary available or explanation for her cause of death. Some interesting facts about Myra. She was the author of 77 published articles. Her interest in nursing started and developed from her father who became ill due to gastrointestinal problems and required nursing care often, which she was a strong caregiver for. She was married to Edwin Levine, in which they had three children, two boys and one girl, her oldest boy passing away at a young age. In 1977, she was the first person to receive an award for excellence in teaching at Sigma Theta Tau. In 1992, she received an honorary doctorate from Loyola University, which was her greatest accomplishment. Myra's timeline of successes. She initially started her education at Cook County School of Nursing where she received her diploma. She received her BSN from the University of Chicago in 1949, her MSN from Wayne State University in 1962, and her honorary doctorate from Loyola University in 1992. Myra's career was very broad. She had a lot of experience. She had clinical experience as OT technique in oncology, a civilian nurse, director of nursing, clinical instructor, administrative supervisor, chairperson of clinical nursing, and she even was a visiting professor in Israel. She went in 1974 and loved it so much she went again in 1982. Myra continued to do research but retired from the rest of her careers in 1987. Philosophical underpinnings. Levine's conservation model theory was based on Nightingale's idea that the nurse created an environment in which healing could occur. Levine's theory was articulated upon the studies based on different reviews. She adopted information from various other disciplines. She drew from the works of Tillich on the unity principle of life, Bernard on the internal environment, Cannon on the theory of homeostasis, and Waddington on the concept of hemorrhoids. She also used other scientists' work. Here is a video of Myra, other individuals Myra looked up to throughout her career. There were a few people who inspired the development of my theory. Meet a couple of my favorites. I'm Irene Bellenden. I was one of Myra's teachers. My theory was of specific causative factors for disease. Gibson here. Maya was inspired by my theory of perception as a mediator of behavior. My name is Eric Erickson. Miss Levine utilized my definition of wholeness in her theory. I am Bates. Maya utilized my model of external environment. I'm Ansela. I created a theory on stress. Giggity, giggity. You all know me, Florence Nightingale. My guardian activity of observation's importance to the nursing process inspired Levine. Myra's concept was known as the conservation model or the conservation theory. Here is an outline of what this entailed. It goes from environment to the disruption of wholeness, a nursing adaptation to conservation of wholeness. I will not go into further detail about what each of these entail. Composition of conservation model. The goal of this model is to promote adaptation and maintain wholeness using the principles of conservation. It focuses on the influences and responses at the organismic level. Key concepts of this theory. Adaptation. Every individual has a unique range of adaptive responses that can be that can vary by hereditary, age, gender, or the challenges that come with experiencing an illness. These responses are the same, but the timing and manifestation of the responses are different in each individ individual, typically pending on their pulse rate. This is an ongoing process of change, and this leads to during this time, 
the patient should be able to maintain integrity while staying within the realities of the environment. Achieved through the frugal, economic, contained, and controlled use of environmental resources by the individual in his or her best interest. The second key concept is wholeness. Without the environment, this does not exist. The environment allows integrity to be assured, promoted by the conservation principle. So the last concept is conservation, the product of adaptation, achieved when balance of energy supply and demand is within the unique biological realities for that specific patient. The four conservation principles that are focused on in this model are energy, structure, personal integrity, and social integrity. The conservation principles. Conservation of energy includes balancing energy input and output to avoid excessive fatigue, adequate rest, nutrition, and exercise. Conservation of structural integrity. Maintaining or restoring the structure of body. This prevents physical breakdown and promoting healing. Conservation of personal integrity. Recognize individual strive for recognition, respect, self-awareness, selfhood, and self-determination. And finally, conservation of social integrity. Recognize individuals reside within a family, community, religious group, ethnic group, and political system. In this theory, we see a lot of person versus environment. So we define person as a holistic being who strives for wholeness and integrity, and the environment completes the wholeness of this person. There's an internal and an external environment. Internal includes homeostasis versus hemorrhesis, and the external environment includes preconceptual, operational, and conceptual. The patient versus or the patient and environment. Adaptation. There is multiple characteristics. Historicity. Adaptations are grounded in history and a wait for challenge to respond to. Specificity. The individual responses and their adaptive pattern varies on genetics. And redundancy explains option available to ensure continued adaptations. Organismic responses. This is to protect and maintain integrity. There's the fight or flight response. This is the most primitive response that humans have. Instantaneous response to real or imagined threat. An inflammatory response is intended to provide structural integrity and promote healing. A stress response is developed over time, but a patient's each stressful experience creates a better and better stress response. Perceptual, gathering information from environment and converts into meaningful experience. This conservation theory is a very broad scope of the nursing practice or nursing role. These are nine models used in the conservation theory to promote adaptation and maintain wholeness. Most of these methods are seen today. We can see it primarily in the nursing process, assessment, hypothesis, interventions, and evaluations. These nine models include vital signs, body movement, positioning, meeting personal hygiene needs, pressure gradient system in nursing interventions, nursing determination and provision of nutritional needs, pressure gradient system in nursing, local application of hot and cold, administration of medicine, and establishing an aseptic environment. Examples of each of these models of conservation are seen in current nursing practices today. Conservation of energy includes encouraging rest for the patient, let them sleep when possible. Selecting an appropriate diet and nutrition for them to heal and continue to get better. And educate the importance of exercise. Conservation of structure. Assist with range of motion exercises and maintain and assist with personal hygiene for these patients. Conservation of personal integrity. Recognize and protect patients' space needs. Let them know when you're going to touch them and what you're going to do. If they're uncomfortable with you or with someone, help them find someone that they do trust. Conservation of social integrity. Position the patient in a way to foster interactions with visitors. Avoid sensory deprivation, open the blinds during the day, close them at night. Promote the use of newspaper, TV, radios. Provide assistance and welcome their family members and maintain religious ties. Many hospitals offer for a pastor to come visit. A study found, or a study focused on postpartum care 
was had the purpose to maintain wholeness to mothers giving birth while conserving energy, personal and social integrity. As you could tell, those are some key concepts to Myers conservation theory. The sample was 117 per perea. These are individuals that had given labor to a child. There were two different groups that were used. There was the intervention group that participated in a full program based on module trainings. And then the control group received routine care that they would receive at a typical hospital. The outcomes of this study found that the intervention group that went through those module trainings experienced less fatigue and their quality of sleep and quality of life improved considerably. This shows that Levin's conservation model enables the provision of the integrative care uh, for women in the postpartum period. A mid-range theory would be Swanson's caring theory. The main concepts of this theory include maintaining belief, knowing, being with, doing for, and enabling. The theory aims to help nursing personnel to deliver care that promotes dignity, respect, and empowerment. This model was framed to ensure consistent caring behaviors, which would in turn improve patient satisfaction. The overall goal of this theory was to stimulate caregivers' attitude and improve overall patient well-being. Key definitions of Swanson's caring theory included nursing, informed caring for the well-being of others, health, a complex process of establishing new meanings, restoring integration, and emerging into a sense of renewed wholeness. Environment, any context that influences or is influenced by the patient, defined situationally. In person, unique dynamic beings with thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. As you can see, these four key definitions of Swanson's caring theory are also four very key concepts in Myra's conservation theory. Overall conclusion, nursing involves human interactions. Communication is key. The goal of nursing is to promote wholeness. Be sure to realize that every individual patient requires unique and separate cluster of activities. Not every patient is going to be the same. Honestly, no patient will really ever be the same. Individual integrity is an abiding concern and the nurse must take responsibility in assisting the patient to defend and to seek its realization. Overall, this theory extends nursing science by increasing safety, reducing errors, and a higher quality of care. Some questions to consider after learning about this theory would be taking the time to realize where you've applied this conservation theory when you were caring for a patient. What was your disruption in wholeness and what was the adaptation that was used um, to improve care? Second, without Myra's theory, where do you think nursing would be today? Here's our references and a picture of Myra. Thank you very much.